Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel. Now I wanted to touch base with you guys uh, because uh, the last video that we loaded up, the last update video we loaded up, there might have been a little bit of a confusion as uh, to people thinking that I'm not going to be as active or active on YouTube anymore. I am going to going to continue creating content and loading it on YouTube, but it's just going to be mainly edited videos right all the live stream stuff is not really going to be loaded on youtube anymore so i wanted to clear that up because some people were concerned that i might step away from doing this work and i'm not going to step away from doing this work i love creating this content and just for the math stuff uh, you know i've said this five years ago i said this 10 years ago but i have at least another five to ten years worth of content just to create to cover all of high school mathematics so i'm not going away anytime soon if i can help it okay and uh, what i wanted to do is sort of give you guys uh, sort of a little basic outline of what we're going to do for the rest of the year for the rest of 2018 instead of giving you giving you guys updates as to you know the content that we're going to be creating the next three videos or the next five videos and stuff like this the way we're doing it with the live streams and recording i'll just give you a general overview of what we're going to focus on for the next few months okay now one thing i've already planned out to do and we're going to we're going to do in the next couple of days is we're going to do an asmr math video uh specifically based on personal finance focused on economics okay and it's just basically going to be uh, a couple of videos that we're going to create one of them is going to be sort of setting up the grid the way we did with uh, uh, with the 10 by 10 math puzzle but we're going to use that technique to basically create a graph on the wall again and once we do that i'm sort of going to try to edit the video and do a reading segments of krishnamurti's education and the significance of life we'll see how that turns out okay that hopefully is the next video being loaded on after this and then the following video is going to be us taking a look at uh, return on investment where you could have parked your money into two different types of asset classes or currency classes whichever way you want to look at it and see what the return on investment would be and we're going to sort of focus on timing on this on time frame and that's one of the most important things you have to really appreciate when it comes to uh thinking about your own personal finances is basically what your timeline is what your time frame is when you're entering a certain investment opportunity okay when it comes to personal finance specifically and business as well okay so those two videos are set in stone there's a couple of other personal finance asmr videos that i have lined up i'm not sure when i'm going to slip them in the next few months and we're definitely going to be doing possibly well most likely more asmr math videos maybe in groups maybe individual standalones okay uh, and we're definitely going to be doing uh, it for sure we're going to slip in uh, at least a few uh, 10 by 10 math puzzles where we set up the grid again and we sort of do live live puzzle solving of the 10 by 10 puzzle <laughs> i'll put it that way um, the reason i'm hesitating on that on the terminology on that uh, you can take a look at the previous update video for that okay um, we will do open discussions politics economics specifically live stream so they won't be being uh, they probably won't be loaded on youtube unless i decide to record parts of it if q a comes in i'll make segments where i give my commentary regarding a certain situation that's happening in the world so i'll, I'll probably set up the lapel mic and set up uh, the camera as well to do the recording just in case anything comes up that i think i ha have something to contribute regarding the topic okay and we'll possibly do well most likely do more stuff in the kitchen okay and that stuff is most likely going to be uh live streams okay but one of the main things we're going to focus on and those are the randoms i wanted to touch base on and one of the other randoms is i've made a lot of promises over the years and uh, i've mentioned to people that if they haven't seen a certain type of video come up that i've promised to do just to send me a comment 
uh, just saying, hey, Chicho, you promised to do something, and, you know, can you do it? Um, I'll try to kick that up the queue and get it done ASAP. So uh, there might be some outstanding IOUs that I have out there that might come back, you know, promises that I made that we'll end up doing random videos for as well, right? So those are sort of the random stuff that we're going to do. But for the next few months, the main focus of what we're going to do is going to be comic books. We're going to be doing comic book readings, and I'm going to start incorporating some information about some of the comics that I published, and we'll definitely start doing readings of some of the comics that I published. Okay, and uh, I have some of the comics that I published here. I found almost everything going through some boxes except for two of them. So what I like to do is show you the covers for this, right? And the reason I hit these up, and I'm, you know, uh, let me give you a little bit of info as well regarding what's been going on for the last couple of weeks since the last update, right? The last update sort of decided that we're going to change gears a little bit on YouTube, the way we're going to do things um, based on, you know, what we've been doing for the last six, seven eight nine months or so so we're sort of going to go back to what we we're doing before which is basically just recording video editing and then loading that stuff on youtube right but uh, basically i was going to let that video float for about you know a few days and then get back into creating content but what i ended up happening was um, a family member was moving out of a house they've been in for like 50 years right so what we ended up doing was um, giving you know helping them out for the last couple of weeks and it took a lot of effort to get someone out of a house that been they've been in for a couple of you know, for 50 years right and i was only really involved with it for a couple of weeks uh, other people were involved with it for a few months right so you can just imagine the amount of work required to do that but one thing that happened during this move is some furniture some pieces ended up making their way into our space here and what you see behind me is one of those pieces right and this is a teak set custom made specifically made for a stereo system right so let me show you this because what i've done before we've we've done a little bit of music i came across some records uh, my record collection and boxes and some other record collections came together and we've done a little bit of music video where i'm showing you the records i've played and uh, gave you some reviews of records uh, that i've really enjoyed right and this is the record player that we've been uh, using right and this record player was actually with the set so it made it to us you know a few months ago right and now this custom piece has made it into our space as well right so with this piece coming into our space what ended up happening is we did a full well not a full but we did a pretty nice heavy duty rearranging our space and i ended up going through boxes where i knew my you know mermaid comics were so i found almost all the mermaid comics that i published so i'd like to show you those covers but before we get into that let me show you the setup because this sucker this thing is beautiful right so we put the record player up here this thing has a little door that opens and this is the amp basically set up where everything's connected to here and it goes through here right so you can turn this baby on right you can close it because if you have it on the right settings you can do whatever you want if you're playing records what we also ended up doing we set up our tape deck and i haven't been listening to tapes other than one of the old cars that we have we have some tape it has a tape player still so i listen to tapes when i'm driving that car right but check this out i hit up a box of the tapes that i had from the 1970s that made it to canada with me or with us from iran right and we set up check this out this thing sort of rolls out right we have the tape player set up down there and we've got some of the tapes here i have at least one more huge box of tapes that i'll try to get to but let me show you a couple of tapes actually yeah a couple of tapes that i listened to all the way through front and back right 
And by the way, the records, check this out. On this side, let me show you the records first. Okay. On this side is some more records that made it to us. And I've been going through those. So let me show you the records that I've listened to so far. Okay. And what I got queued up, right? So this is, I have no idea what this was. I recognize one of the songs that I played. Okay. Exile. Um, I don't remember these guys, but it, it was okay. I mean, I won't, you know, I won't be playing it again. Okay. I just gave it a whirl one time around. And this is, I check out the picture of these guys, right? Very 70s, 80s maybe, right? Here's another one I listened to, which was pretty good. And this is something that I've listened to in the past. And it was Prism, right? I don't know if this is their debut album or not, actually. Um, it's Prism, Prism. It doesn't have a name of the album. So this was pretty good. I might give this another whirl. Okay. Uh, worth listening to. Okay. And here's a back. Nice album. Very happy to be listening to it again. Okay. This album was absolutely brilliant. I listened to this a lot in the past. Okay. And they were my favorite bands growing up in the 80s and stuff. By Dire Straits Communique. What an amazing album. Okay. This thing, you know, stands the test of time it's on the same level as breakfast in america by super trap right what an amazing album what an amazing album okay this one i will definitely listen to again and again and again okay really fantastic album i forgot how amazing this album was i hadn't listened to this for years years decades right a long long time glad to have you know come across it and let me show you some of the albums I got lined up to play and then I'll show you the two tapes that I listened to right let there be rock ACDC I've come across like going through record collections I've come across like this is the fourth ACDC album I've come across I've listened to three of them already right uh, from what I remember fantastic album fantastic album can't wait to give it a whirl right Actually, I'm going to listen to that one first. Here's one I found. I have no idea what this is, but just because of the cover, I want to I wanna listen to it. <laughs> Check this out. Andresi Brothers. Look at that cover. How could you not want to listen to that album? Right? <laughs> like crazy. Look, look at that. Awesome. Just pure awesome. Right? So I'm going to give this a whirl. I don't know if I'll give a review of it or not, but uh, we'll see what it's made out of, right? And this one, I don't remember this. Firehall, Evan. Ellen, sorry, not Evan. I don't, I don't recognize these, this band. I do as a group maybe, but because there were so many large groups uh, coming out in the 70s and 80s. So I don't remember this, but I'm going to give it a whirl, see what it's like. Okay, so those of you who are interested in records, I know there's a few of you that uh, are heavy into music, especially albums. Uh, maybe you recognize, well, for sure, a couple of them, Dire Straits and ACDC you recognize, but, um, and Prism for sure, but I'm not sure if you recognize the rest. As far as uh, the tapes that I've listened to so far, check this out. This is an album that we listened to when we brought out the albums here. Okay. Andy Gibb, right? <laughs> I love this. I love Andy Gibb. Andy Gibb was phenomenal. I was really sad when uh, we found out he passed away. Now, I listened to both sides of this tape. And let me show you this, okay? And unfortunately, what happened? This tape is from the 1970s, right? It made it to me. Let me show you the next one, and I'll show you one of the problems I had with this. And here is the second tape, and this tape. Oh, wow, wow, wow. This is one of the tapes I listened to the most in my life, in the 70s and 80s, 
right? It's 19, it's a mixtape of 1970s, uh, 1976, 77, 78 funk, electro funk disco, right? Phenomenal, okay? And I'll pop up the what's on this album, okay? Just so you know. But basically, the way it worked, uh, let me show you the cover again, maybe. And this isn't the cover for the whole tape, okay? Um, but basically what this was in the 19 in iran basically when i was growing up you would go to a record store the music store and you would buy tapes but the tapes weren't the original tapes that were released by the companies in in the western world right they were pirated tapes and these are the tapes they recorded on these things right uh fuji film fx pure Phoenix C80 and stuff like this and because these tapes were long they wouldn't put one album on them they would put two albums on them right so they'd be one on this side and then one on this side right and if you take a look at tapes take a look at up top here right if you see these the little things little gadgets here okay I'm gonna bring it up really close to the HD camera right see those little things you can break those off right and when they're attached like this basically it means you can record over this thing right so what they would do is they would you know whoever was doing this the stores in third world countries and out any countries outside the western world i guess right they would buy these blank tapes and then record over them with the original albums that the western worlds had released now this is the beauty of it right these tapes were better quality than what the tapes were that the western western corporations were releasing the original albums on right so these tapes from the 1970s still play beautifully great sound most of them right when i came to canada i would i still continue to buy tapes and some of the tapes would fade out and blur, become blurry and stuff within a couple of years so just imagine the planned obsolescence that was in play for corporations or has been in play for corporations for as long as they've been around really right 40 years ago they were producing tapes cassette tapes selling them on crappy tapes so they would die out and then you would have to buy new ones 40 years ago i was buying pirated stuff when i was like 10 9 8 years old right i was really young back then right and this is one of the albums i was listening to andy gibb and this and i'll show you another one i have uh well i'll show it to you later uh it's boston's first album or second album sorry uh that stuff in the 1970s you know when you were eight nine ten years old and these tapes still play right fantastic however there is a minor problem with them because they are old and this tape deck is old when i played check this out when i played the andy gibb tape right when it got to the end because it was loose the tape thing came out of it unfortunately right so you know when when i'm so inclined maybe uh, if any of these tapes happen like this I'm just gonna put them in a box and maybe someday I'm gonna go back and restore these tapes and this thing unfortunately the the tracks that are written on these um, they're uh, they're written pretty small but basically this has two albums on it right two of Andy Gibbs albums on it okay so let me put this back in the tape again into this case again right and they would obviously the the cover images and stuff they were just copied or color copied or whatnot and just put on right so for example if you take a look at this this is this is what they released the papers on and this was the original paper that the blank cassette tapes were released on right so they release them they put them both together and put them in a the cassette tape and sell you the little cassettes right fantastic fantastic very happy to have found this 
and uh, what we'll what we'll probably do is uh, for uh, the live stream session because again we are live broadcasting this as well it's just not going to be loaded on youtube i think what we're going to do is we're going to play this album okay magic fly by space right and that's just one song on there let me read you the rest of these things uh what's on here okay uh, so magic magic fly by space fantastic okay it's just uh uh, uh no vo no vocals in it uh, dance and shake your tambourine by universal robot band surprised by andre gagnon and this is uh, these are 1976 77 78 all the songs listed here king kong is back by century orchestra babysitter by soul Ibrats ibrachi band bayam salam <laughs> bayam salam by manu manu the bango Aloka Party by Manu the Bango. That's side A. Side B is Touch Me, Take Me by Black Light Orchestra. Got my Got to See My Lady by T Connection. Do what you're uh, you want to do by T Connection. Let's try once again by Patrick Norman. Up Jump the Devil by John Davis and the Monster Orchestra. You got to give it up by John Davis and the Monster Orchestra, and Funky Tropical by Bidu Orchestra. Okay, that's, those are the those are the tracks that are on that cassette tape. Okay, fantastic. I've already listened to it once, and we're gonna listen to it again after we finish this recording. Okay, and the last thing I want to do, because we did a little reshuffle, right? I hit up some boxes that I've been meaning to hit up. I found some uh, original art that we had planned on publishing, but we didn't get a chance. I ran out of money, right? But let me show you the comics that I ended up publishing, okay? And again, I found everything except two issues, okay? And I'll tell you what those are. So let me put these. So check that out. Oh yeah, one other thing I want to show you, and I've shown you this before, uh, when I gave you a little intro to Eye for an Eye, but let me show you the Eye for an Eye covers again. And what I ended up finding in the boxes is issue number one, two, and three, uh, a handful of copies that I asked the creators of the comic book to sign. And they all signed it on the covers, right? So here's issue number one. Okay, let me show you where they signed it. So here's issue number one, right? And it's signed on the cover by three of the creators. There's one sign signature here. I don't know if you can see it. It's signed with gold pen. There's another one here, and then there's another one here, right? So issue number one, and we talked about this, and we will definitely be reading this book we're going to read everything that i published by the way all the comics that i published and there was like 14 15 something here's issue number two right and i gave you a little history on eye for an eye uh when uh on a previous video and a little bit of history on mermaid comics mermaid publications and here's issue number three right awesome all signed this one the signature is here here and here check this out here here and here okay there's a lot there's glare on this my apologies for that okay so that's three of the comics i found okay or three of the issues that i published let me put these back it's sort of in the same place they belong Oh yeah, another thing I'm gonna show you. Check this out. Now for the comics that we published, okay, for three of the titles, we printed t-shirts, okay? And I wore these t-shirts and these things are beaten down, but I kept this one. This is the eye for an eye t-shirt, right? Eye for an eye, right? And here's the back. 
check this out awesome i loved this t-shirt i printed a few of these and i've gone through i don't know we printed like i don't know i think like 30 30 or 40 of these and i personally went through like 10 of them myself over the last couple of decades right fantastic look at that artwork i love that i love that right awesome and that's at a convention on the east coast of canada uh we actually gave away the original art piece of this um at a convention okay so that's the eye for an eye t-shirt here is another comic book we published and i couldn't find issue number one and two okay but i found the ash can that we released as a promo that we sent out to comic book store stuff this is ash can of mortal coil okay and it's basically issue number one it's all of issue number one and at the back let me all crack this open let me show it to you so here's mortal coil ash can okay and it contains all of issue number one right so here's the artwork for it okay let me show you a splash page that he did hold on i want to show you this one this one's super cool here's another splash page right it's very 90s it's the book that we needed to get publish to get diamond comics to carry our books and they didn't even carry the other books i'm going to show you which is insane as far as i'm concerned right um, very conan -ish. i'll show you this page as well right so this is this contained issue number one okay and then towards the end i'll show you these ones as well add a few pages of starry night okay just as a promo and I'll show you publish three issues of this as well right Google -Go boy right and I'll show you this as well okay so it had a few pages of Google -Go boy and this was the rough uh, first draft of the Google -Go boy that we printed and it had copies of eye for an eye as well a few pages of eye for an eye as a promo right and we sent this out I sent this out to I don't know like a thousand stores across Canada United States right and for mortal coil we also made a t-shirt okay this is mortal coil right it's very metal right and here is the back of mortal coil right very metal very metal let me bring it closer see if you see right. there's a lot of people that love this t-shirt the eye for an eye uh, people loved I loved it a lot but there's a lot of uh, you know I've always listened to metal I had a lot of friends that love metal so a lot of them love this t-shirt and they wore this t-shirt I actually had a friend recently do a move and contact me and say Chicho I found this t-shirt of yours uh, he was purging he said if I wanted it I said listen I already have a copy thank you very much uh, so there was people I had friends wearing these t-shirts which was awesome okay here is one book the title that in retrospect I am extremely extremely proud to have published right uh, at the time uh, well we'll talk about this later okay but it is basically the first superhero LGBT comic book series ever published in the comic book medium it was focused on LGBT characters and it was superhero based and it was going to be a continuing series and we published I published four issues of this uh, three issues number one two and three and the ash can this is the ash can version okay and this was originally the cover of number three but um we published this one and i got neil 
Uh, Neil Johnson was the artist, the writer, the artist. He did everything on this, right? Um, he was a creator for this. And I, what I ended up doing is getting Neil Johnson to redo all the artwork for this story and the cover for issue number three. This was basically issue number three that we printed as an ash can, right? To redo it so we could try one last time to get it picked up to get it accepted through diamond distributors and they refused again right and our take was at the time is because it was lgbt right so this is on the same level it was printed first it was on the same level as the Mer uh, mortal coil ash can it contained all of gogo -Go boy number three and excerpts of mortal coil eye for an eye and starry night okay and let me show you gogo -Go boy number one okay this is Google Boy number one. Okay. I'll tell you the story on this uh, on future future videos. Okay. Uh, it was an amazing learning experience for me. Amazing learning experience. I would not be who I am if I did not publish this comic book. That's how important it was. And as far as the comic book industry is concerned, the first superhero LGBT comic book series ever. <laughs> I didn't realize how important that was uh, until years later of doing this. Okay, this is issue number one. And let me show you this. Actually, I'll show you that. Uh, I'll show you the t shirt that we made for this uh, after we look at issue number two and issue number three. Here's issue number two. We made actually a t-shirt of this too, just one t-shirt that I was wearing, okay? And the text there says, we will not be labeled. And in the background is um, a Latin text that uh, I forget what it said, but Neil put in there. And Go Go Boy number two. And I believe this is the first appearance of the invisible lesbian, okay? <laughs> awesome. It was my first exposure to the LGBT community when I published this. And what a learning experience. What an amazing community, really. Uh, Google Go Boy, uh, Neil Johnson got interviewed by two of the largest uh, LGBT queer magazines uh, that were distributed around the globe. They put them on the cover of their magazines. That's how huge this was, right? for the lgbt community but we didn't get picked up by diamond distributors so the comic book industry was not aware of this right or they censors blocked it right and here is issue number three which is the same story as the ashcan but i asked neil to redo the cover and redo the artwork and he ended up doing it and this was this cover i discover what a brilliant cover we redid the logo as well okay or neil did it using the 3d software back available in the early 1990s which was very very it's nothing like now right so he created that using 3d software and the cover um it was something that came to me that i asked neil if he could create this and he did i asked him if we could take the pride flag and have it dripping down like blood into a pool because we just couldn't get diamond distributors to pick this up and they blacklisted us for the other titles until we came up with mortal coil and lander right but it was too late right so this is issue number three okay and let me show you the t-shirt that we ended up printing for Google Boy. Okay, now take a look at this. Now what happened is, here's the t-shirt. Okay, It's just on the cover. There's no back to it. The back doesn't have anything like the other ones. But I printed this off, right? I'm not sure if that's coming up, but that's the pink triangle beautiful t-shirt really beautiful t-shirt fantastic t-shirt but there's only one problem with the t-shirts that we made this, with this full black uh, because these were in storage I have like five of these things here they're mint condition however you can't wear these anymore because I think the black ink uh, 
sort of degrades the shirts when i went to wear this it tore on me right so take a look at this i'll show you this right it breaks easily right there were high quality t-shirts but i think it has something to do with the ink they use and stuff because the same t-shirts as the other ones the white and the gray or the cream color and the gray uh, but those have lasted multiple wears multiple wears but these ones didn't hold out okay so these are the t-shirts we pl uh, printed for Google -Go boy okay let me show you the other comics that we printed lander now lander is one of the comics is the last title that I picked up to publish and it was because um, I met these guys in Denver in a Denver convention okay and they were fantastic okay shadow on the uh they're they're true comic book aficionado shadow was a comic book collector I went to his house and saw his comic book collection back in the day he had it in his garage and it was multiple boxes he had way more comics than I had he had like runs of amazing spider-man iron man and stuff like this and he sent me his you know proposal to do his comic and uh, he had it outlined he had a book he had it outlined for multiple multiple issues like two three years down the road right I read it um, I did some editing on it the the writing uh, we worked on it together and we built it up and he you know he had hooked up with Laval and Laval was an amazing artist and uh, you know I decided to go with it because this was definitely going to be picked up with diamond distributors because the art style uh, is absolutely fantastic and the story was amazing so this is issue number one okay and these ones everything else except for lander are printed with uh, Kubakor printing that's where in Montreal Canada that's where they were most of the stuff was being printed for most publishers uh, but these ones only had a few hundred print run the other ones by the way everything I printed uh, had 2,000 or less print run okay 2000 uh, and I've done a and that was in the mid 1990s right and I've done multiple moves over the years and only a small fraction of that has made it to me to where I am now right so there's only a few of these comics around right they're rare uh, or scarce you would call it but this is lander number one is a gate for cover okay beautiful cover and the artwork was fantastic Laval did the really amazing artwork very detailed so let me show you this okay beautiful comic book um, I was proud to publish this I was proud to publish everything except for one issue and that's mortal coil number two because uh, the inker dropped out dealing with artists was crazy at the time uh, you know I had artists come up to me and say you know Dick Ayers or Kirby sells their artwork you know hundred dollars a page so they should also get paid paid hundred dollars a page or two hundred dollars a page and I was like dude that's like Jack Kirby and Dick Ayers and whatnot uh, so the inker dropped out for mortal coil number two and I had to do some of the inking stuff it didn't come out well but it had a deadline right here is uh, oh, this one's got a little bit of mock-up on it check that out a little bit of so let me show you a clean one let me put this out here we go here's lander number two okay so these are the two that I published in Vancouver as far as I could get okay and here is the only trade paperback we published and this one is full credit to shadow which was the writer creator of this universe and it's this is the trade paperback right so this is the cover for it and I forget who did the cover for this was it the cares no it was uh, cover 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 ink cover by yeah Dick all oh, inside covers the inside covers inside cover inks by Dick cares oh yeah that's right check this out 
this cover I should show you. I'm going to show you this to you again right I've forgotten some of the history of this so I have to refresh myself a little bit this cover is by Dick Ayers okay fantastic and Dick Ayers is a legend the guy you know has been around for decades I'm not sure if he's still alive or not uh, probably not but he was working as a comic book artist in 19 uh, as far as I know 1950s 60s and 70s right and 80s and 90s right so shadow commission that art by Dick Ayers right this is the cover for the trade paperback and this contains the trade paperback contains issue number one and two reprint of issue number one and two and issue three that I never got to printing publishing as uh, a standalone issue right and the way this got done shadow at the time the writer the creator of the series was working in a printing uh, house at a printers so he did this on his own time uh, going to the printers at night and using whatever paper that was left over to uh, to get these out right and again the print runs of these guys are are not very many there's only a few hundred of these around uh, of land or around and the other comics as well there isn't that many of them around anymore uh, unfortunately they all didn't make it with me okay unfortunately let me show you this one very proud of this one Lori Saltz created this and this was uh, called starry night okay here's the cover of issue number one beautiful artwork I love the series It's post-apocalyptic and it's very slow paced and just chill you know what let me take it out of the cover so you don't get the glare and I'll show you some of the artwork inside as well okay hopefully it doesn't give you as much glare here's the cover of number one right and let me show you this Here, let me show you this what does that remind you of artwork wise it's very Sam Keith right and that's one of the reasons I decided to publish this aside from uh, aside from it being post-apocalyptic which I love right post-apocalyptic stories um, and I also live, love Sam Keith so this was an easy decision for me to uh, decide to publish this okay so inside pages right issue number one and she produced she produced so much work I was so sad that you know when I had the conversation with her saying Lori I'm sorry you know I ran out of funds I can't I can't print anymore I was like extreme debt here's the number two okay love this series love this series and here's issue number three all right beautiful artwork hand colored right she wrote did all the work okay and I actually have uh, two more issues of this uh, I believe anyway the artwork that maybe someday I'm gonna release I'm definitely gonna when I find them I'll definitely read them to you guys because it needs to be shared take a look beautiful absolutely beautiful artwork okay and the story was solid it was deep it was brilliant or it is brilliant okay so that's starry night and eye for an eye you've seen already so the only two comics that I couldn't find were mortal coil number one and mortal coil number two and they're somewhere uh, when I find them I'll definitely show them to you and uh, you know we'll get a chance to read mortal coil number one because the same as the ash can and when I find mortal coil number two we'll try that as well okay uh, so that's about it that's what I wanted to you know touch base with you on I am definitely going to be still producing work uh, sharing this content on YouTube and other other platforms no worries there there's a lot of work that we need to do that we want to do 
uh, that I would uh, I will gladly continue doing as long as uh, I don't get knocked off of any platforms or whatnot. And if I do keep track of some of the other platforms that I'm on, um, we will continue to work on the other platforms on whatever other platforms that come on that are decentralized, that do not censor the content being loaded on their platforms the way some of the major players are doing. Okay. Um, I hope you enjoy it. And um, definitely for the rest of the year, we're going to be comic book centric in a big way because um, for reading set number four there's still a lot of comics outstanding that we're going to read now we've added all of the mermaid comics that i published to the reading list as well and there are some other comics that i've put aside that i want to read for you guys and there is another haul coming as soon as i get a hold of the seller He's disappeared for the last four or five days. So hopefully that package, when I get a hold of the seller, will finalize the payment. I've been buying comics off this guy for the last month or so, and there's a couple of comics there that I really want to read for you guys as well uh, to add to our collection or playlist of comic books that we've read. Okay, so that's about it. Um, and uh, I hope you stick around. I hope you continue watching. And... Uh, thank you thank you very much for the support in whichever way you're supporting this work and for those of you on patreon there's a message a little post for you regarding these comic books uh, if you're supporting me with through patreon check out the message that i posted at the end of july okay uh, and it's related to these comics that i published and let me know if you're interested in participating in that little thank you uh, my attempt at sending you guys a little thank you gift uh, thank you package for supporting this work okay uh, that's about it i'll see you guys in the next video bye for now